Hi, my name is Dave Booker. I am the author of the Time Is series, seven books, and two books of short stories that contain a lot of different uh, types of stories from horror to murder mysteries, comedy, a little bit of everything. Today we're going to talk about the Time Is series. That's the first book is Time Is, and generally it's about uh, two guys, uh, Scott Lemuel, who is an inventor, and his assistant, uh, Don Skelton. And Scott has created with Don's help a time machine, a temporal vector TCVTD, temporal correlation vector transport device. And what this does is it links one time with the, with the present, and then you can trans, uh, you can go over to that time period. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, in order for you to understand some of the next readings, which are from the series, it's better that I kind of introduce you to the book and read the first chapter. So that's what we're going to do. The next one that I read to you is going to be where they visit a person named Lepetame. Now, if you've watched, uh, I think it's Blazing Saddles, the uh, governor's name was Lepetame. And Lepetamine was an actual person. He did uh, was at the uh, Moulin Rouge. Didn't act that he was a flatulent artist. So uh, it it and almost every book when there is an event or something going on, they all, they bring a new person into the group because eventually more people join Don and uh, Scott. And as the, they grow, they created a guild of travelers. And every time a new person is in, introduced to this, they go down and see Lepetamine. So you know, there's a lot of different versions of the story of their, his act and its development over time. That's just one of the funny things that I've discovered when I was started uh, writing these novels. A lot of research went into it. So we're going to start with the first chapter and give you an idea of what's going on here. So, uh, the, the, the first thing I'm gonna read though is the introduction here, time is, and it says time, this is written by Scott Lemuel, the time traveler. Time is, that's all you can say about it. It is finite, infinite, linear, and abstract. We have defined time to suit our needs and ideas. Therefore, time is a planetary con agreed upon construct by which we measure its passage and future. So the beginning is, I swiveled in my chair. Hey, Scott, what time is it? The moment I said it, I knew I shouldn't have. He pried his long, thin body from the chair at his computer console and walked slowly towards me, his forehead puckered in deepening thought. When and where, he asked. I controlled the exasperation in my voice. Here and now, please. I really wish Scott would let me wear a watch. Do you want to know from when you asked or from the future construct of the time where question and answer period ends and I checked my watch? I knew he was enjoying himself by the smirk on his face. Roll up your sleeve, look at your watch, and tell me what time it is, please. I pleaded. I was having a hard time controlling my temper but to lose it would only bring about a greater discourse from Scott. He ponderously rolled back his sleeves, looked at his watch, mentally added about seven seconds for the answer, and thereby gave him the time when his answer had finished. Precisely 14.45 and 36 seconds, he answered, with that smug look I knew far too well. I hated that look. Scott, why do we have to go through this every time I ask you the time? He looked at me with mild surprise that I would even ask. Precision, especially in time, is of paramount importance. The more closely you keep track of time, the more you are able to accomplish within the time allowed. Scott won't let me have a watch of my own as he claims it would upset the sensitive computational and geographical diodes of his machine. It's BS, and I know it's BS, and he knows that I know it's BS. It's just so that he can play this game. I don't mind, but sometimes it gets a little old. There's a side note here. I used to have the greatest fossil watch. It was a sundial. 
had a tiny watch on the band so I could actually tell people the time and make it look like I was using it. When Gay asked how I used it at night, I told him I just used to use the flashlight. I thought it was hysterical. Sorry, I digress. In case you were wonder, wanted to know, I'm a computer repair technician and used to work for Best Buy. I also studied computer programming in the old languages, COBOL, RPG, Fortran, and Assembler. I was sent out on a repair job to this prefab building Scott had put up in the middle of the field. After seeing I knew what I was about, creating boards and programming, he offered me a job helping and put together the machine he was working on. That was over two years ago, and we were now at the finishing stages of building what he calls this Temporal Correlation Vector Transport Device, or TCVTD for short. I have more than a hint as to what it is and what it would do, but none on how it would work or what he intended to do with it. I pretend not to understand things sometimes just to please Scott. He used to be a teacher and loves explaining things. My task is the relatively <clears throat> uns sorry. My task is the relatively unskilled portion of soldering board components and fitting pieces in place where he tells me. Though there are times when I am able to perform more intricate tasks like make coffee or run out for sandwiches. Actually there is more to it than that, as I also can encode the chips when he tells me what he wants. Then I write the programs when he can't. It feels good to use the knowledge I worked on for so hard to gain. As it stands now, the DCVTD is a thick panel wall with a doorway. I think 25 feet wide by 4 feet thick and 9 feet high with a note with the doorway about 5 feet wide in the center. The doorway has a thick black back panel that becomes the portal once activated. It also stands in the middle and to the back of the lab. I think we should have placed it anywhere else as it's a nuisance to get around it to get to the bathroom in a hurry. Once it is completed, the walls will be covered in jet black panels and the only control feature will be a small two foot square touch screen. I'm pretty sure we can have it buttoned up today. I hope so since we have been going nonstop since noon and it is now almost 2200. Um, side note, Scott and I are both prior military and we use military time. In case this confuses you, just remember that 0001 to 1200 is AM and 1201 to 0000 is PM, got it? If you do, then you caught on faster than I did. It took me months. Sorry, I just thought you might want to know. I'm tired, hungry, and need a beer. Don, I would like you to stay on tonight and help me finish, please. Scott looked at me with his spaniel eyes and a face which reminded me a lot of Captain Picard's. Whenever he really wants me to stay late or do anything he thinks I might object to, he gives me a look that reminds me a lot of my old dog Trots when he wanted a treat. I usually give in. I enjoyed this project and even though he was paying me a lot of money to assist, I also just enjoyed his company. Scott is usually serious about time and this project, but he can be a lot of laughs. He knows plenty of stories that would have you rolling on the floor. He was in the Air Force and has traveled to get around the globe with stories about everywhere he has been. I was in the Army myself and we spent a lot of time arguing the relative merits of each while we were working. Side note, Army is better. I finished the soldering the boards, then pieced them to, into the very sports. I watched him walk around the almost finished machine and make some more adjustments and inputs. I knew once he sealed it, which would requ only require the regular mapping updates and a simple, simple system check. Put the access panel in place and then seal it after you're done. We'll talk. He closed his laptop with an air finality. As I placed the panel in place and put the coverings over the rest of the machine, I was glad to hear him calling a Chinese place and ordering dinner. I was pleased the idea of food had finally crossed his mind. By the time dinner arrived, I had finished placing the rest of the covers. Don, do you understand what we have built here? His face was flushed with excitement to the top of his bald head. His hands troubled and his eyes were bright. Let me guess, a time machine. I exclaimed with mock enthusiasm. His eyes lost their sparkle and his face went pale. 
Do you extrapolate that from the count components you have been installing? His voice registered a surprise that was almost an insult. With the obsession with time and the programs I have been writing, I kind of guess what it was. Of course that's what it is. Frustration at my guessing welled from every pore in his body. I suddenly thought about the reality of what was of what it was for a second and voiced my misgivings. I suppose you realize that if this works, we have just created the end of civilization as we know it, don't you? That's the first chapter. I'm going to read the second uh, after I do the little bit with uh, Lepetamine. I'll continue to read some of my shorts from A Glimpse of My Shorts and Another Glimpse of My Shorts. And as time goes by, we'll go through the rest of the books and just do chapters or little stories or excerpts from all of them. So in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you again next time. And the next one will be from uh, Time Is, and we'll, we'll be the visit to Lepetame. So thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to see you again at my next reading. Thank you.